puddles. Whoopee! Come on, Doris. Come and jump in this extra big puddle. You'll love it. I will not love it, Morris. You're making me all wet as it is. You will love it, Doris. Honestly. Oh, Morris, I know what I like and what I don't like. Now come out of that puddle and listen to my song. <laughs> I'm Doris the hamster, I'm proud to relate I know what I like and I know what I hate I hate being indoors and I hate being told To go to bed early when I've got a cold Raindrops on roses aren't my sort of thing But hey diddle diddle I do like to sing I'm Doris the hamster I would like a bike, for I know what I hate and I know what I like. I like going walking on wet afternoons, I like sticky puddings and yellow balloons. I like making friends and the buzz of the bee, but hey diddle diddle, I love being me. I'm Doris the hamster, I'm proud to relate I know what I like and I know what I hate I like making friends and the buzz of the bee But hey diddle diddle, I love being me! Clever Trevor, clever Trevor, clever Trevor. Toot, toot. Watch out, Doris. It's Trevor the train. Oh, mind that puddle, Trevor. <laughs> oh, no. Look at me. I'm all wet again. <laughs> Come on, Trevor. Come and jump in the puddles with me. Oh, now stop it, you two. You're very naughty, both of you. Oh, sorry, Doris. I'm not naughty, really. I'm a good, kind, helpful train most of the time. Goody, goody. I was very good the other day. Listen. <laughs> Trevor's Ghost Story It was a lovely sunny day, so Smokey and I decided to go exploring on the far side of Magic Mountain. Smokey is my smoke. He lives in my funnel and can make himself into any shape he wants. We were chugging through some long grass when suddenly the ground caved in and the next moment we were falling down a deep hole. We landed with a crash at the bottom. <coughs> so this is the inside of Magic Mountain, I groaned as I straightened myself out. Smokey pointed towards a tunnel. I wonder where that leads to, I said. We were moving slowly down the tunnel when a spooky scream filled the air. My wheels rattled with fear and Smokey sank back inside my funnel. As we turned the next corner, cobwebs brushed against me and bats flew around my funnel. Skeletons jumped and danced around us. Perhaps a terrible ogre has moved into Magic Mountain, I thought, almost too scared to move. Then we turned another corner and in the darkness... We saw a little red engine. He looks lost, I said to Smokey. He must be very scared. Hello, I'm Trevor, I said to the little red engine. Don't be frightened, I'll save you. But, began the little red engine, there's no time to lose, I said. Quick, join yourself up to me. The little red engine did as I told him, just as a big white thing that looked like a ghost jumped in front of us and wailed. Hooting as loudly as I could, I rushed past it, towing the little red engine behind me. We sped along the tunnel until at last we could see daylight ahead. Whew, am I glad to be out of there, I said. Smokey popped up and looked out of my funnel. Next moment he'd made himself into a big hand and was pointing to a sign above the cave entrance. It said, Ghost Train. Oh no, I groaned. 
so the noises and ghosts weren't real, and there isn't a terrible ogre. I tried to tell you, said the little red engine, but you were in such a hurry I couldn't. You see, there's a fair tomorrow, and the ghost train is one of the rides. People love being scared by all those nasty things when they know they're not real. A fair? Wow, I hooted. Can I be a ghost train too, just for a day? Of course you can, so long as you don't get too scared, said the little red engine, and we laughed and laughed. a ghost train, Trevor? Of course I did, Doris, but I made sure not to frighten anyone too much, except for one really bad girl who wrote on my funnel with her crayons. Well, you know what happens to bad girls, don't you? No, what? Carol's poem will tell you. There was a little girl. There was a little girl who had a little curl right in the middle of her forehead. And when she was good, she was very, very good. And when she was bad, she was horrid. She stood on her head on her little truckle bed with nobody by for to hinder. She screamed and she squalled, she yelled and she bawled and drummed her little heels against the window. Her mother heard the noise and thought it was the boys playing in the empty attic. She rushed up the stairs, caught her daughter unawares and spanked her most emphatic. So that's what happens to bad girls. And bad boys, too, like Morris when he wouldn't get his hair cut. I couldn't get my hair cut because I haven't got any hair. <laughs> I've got fur. Well, a fur cut, then. It's the same thing. And very strange things can happen to people who don't get their hair cut. Nigel knows a story about one of them. Holly's Hairy Haystack. <laughs> There was once a little girl called Holly, who didn't like getting her hair brushed, or washed, or cut. No! she would shout, whenever her mother said, brush your hair, or come to the hairdresser. No, no, no! shouted Holly. One day her mother got very cross and said, very well, Holly, you needn't brush your hair or have it cut any more. Yippee! yelled Holly, and dashed out to play. Her hair began to grow. It grew longer and longer and longer. It got more and more tangled. Holly didn't care. Soon, her hair reached down to her shoulders. It stuck out all over her head. A sparrow saw it and thought it was straw. Oh, just what I need for my nest, he said and pulled hard at a strand. Ouch! cried Holly. That's my hair you're pulling! Her hair continued to grow. Soon it reached down to her knees. Holly could hardly see where she was going. One day a family of mice took a look at Holly's tangled hair and decided it would be a good place to live. The mice moved in and had a lovely time scampering in and out of Holly's hair. Hee-hee-hee, <laughs> giggled Holly. That's tickly. Her hair grew and grew and grew. In no time at all, it had reached her feet. Holly had to be careful not to trip up when she ran. One day, she went for a walk in the country. She came to a field where a farmer was building a haystack. Holly stopped to look. She watched the farmer push his pitchfork into the dried hay on the ground. Then the farmer lifted up a big bundle and passed it to a boy on top of the half-built haystack. 
Holly was so busy watching the haystack grow, she didn't notice the farmer coming towards her. How did this bundle of hay get over here? The farmer muttered, and he raised his pitchfork to lift the bundle of hay. No! squealed Holly. Don't! The farmer stopped. A talking haystack? I, I don't believe it. I'm not a haystack. I'm Holly. I'm a girl. A girl? exclaimed the farmer. You look more like a haystack to me. <laughs> I nearly stuck my pitchfork into you. You need a haircut. Uh, y y yes, stammered Holly. I I'll get one right away. Holly ran all the way home as fast as her long hair would let her. <sighs> Mum, she panted, um, uh, will you take me to get my hair cut? Certainly, said Mum, sounding rather pleased. So Holly had her hair cut and washed and brushed into place. I don't look like a haystack now, do I? She said. Holly was very happy not to look like a haystack anymore. Now she brushes her hair and washes it and goes to the hairdresser without ever saying no. But she keeps clear of farmers building haystacks, just in case. Morris, what are you eating? A lovely juicy apple. And where did you get it from? From the Magic Garden. Digby won't mind. Maybe not, but if you were that apple, you wouldn't like it if someone just picked you and ate you without asking. Hamsters can't be apples. Anyone can be an apple. Listen to Stephen's song. If I were an apple If I were an apple and grew upon a tree I think I'd fall down on a good boy like me I wouldn't stay there giving nobody joy I'd fall down at once and say, eat me, my boy If I were an apple and grew upon a tree I think I'd fall down on a good boy like me I wouldn't stay there giving nobody joy I'd fall down at once and say, eat me, my boy was made out of sweets, I could eat it all up. Carol knows a story which has a sweetie house in it. Oh, tell me, tell me. All right. It's called Hansel and Gretel. Hansel and his sister Gretel lived with their father and stepmother on the edge of a dark forest. Their father was a poor woodcutter. One evening, Hansel and Gretel heard their stepmother say, there isn't enough food for all of us. Take the children into the forest and leave them there. They'll never find their way home. So the woodcutter took Hansel and Gretel deep into the forest. Oh, Hansel, I'm frightened. 
whispered Gretel. Don't worry, said her brother. I have a plan. He took some snow-white stones out of his pocket and dropped them one by one on the forest track as they walked. At last, their father stopped. Stay here while I chop some wood, he said, trying to hide his tears. Goodbye, children. Soon, Hansel and Gretel were all alone. Oh, we're lost! We're lost! cried Gretel. No, look, said Hansel. There in the moonlight, the white stone shone on the shadowy path. Hansel and Gretel followed the path home. Their father was overjoyed to see them, but their stepmother was furious. When Hansel and Gretel had gone to bed, she said to her husband, Tomorrow you must take them into the forest again and make sure you lose them this time. Next night, the woodcutter took Hansel and Gretel deep into the forest. Oh, Hansel, I'm frightened, whispered Gretel. Don't worry, said her brother. He took some snow-white breadcrumbs out of his pocket and dropped them one by one on the forest track as they walked. At last, their father stopped. Stay here while I chop some wood, he said, trying to hide his tears. Goodbye, children. Soon, Hansel and Gretel were all alone. The moon came out. Now all we have to do is follow my trail of breadcrumbs, said Hansel. But, oh dear, the birds had pecked up all the white bread. Hansel and Gretel were completely lost. They curled up together by a tall tree and went to sleep. In the morning, Hansel and Gretel wandered through the forest, hungry and frightened. All at once, they saw a house among the trees. It had walls of golden gingerbread and a chocolate roof with licorice chimney pots. There were clear peppermints for windows, and lollipops grew like flowers in the garden. Oh, I must have some, cried Hansel, and ran and broke a piece of chocolate off the roof. Hansel, stop it! This is someone's house, said Gretel. Suddenly, the front door was opened by an old lady. That's all right, my dears. Come in. I have all kinds of lovely things for you to eat, she said. But Hansel and Gretel didn't move. The old lady had spiky black hair and a long, twisted nose. Beyond her, inside the house, Hansel could see jars of sweets piled right up to the ceiling. Come in, come in, my dears, she said. So in they went. The door slammed behind them. The old lady was a witch. Ha 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 ha! I've caught you, snap, in my little sugar trap. Gretel girl will work for me. Hansel boy? Ah, wait and see. From that day on, Gretel had to scrub the witch's floor and do her washing and light her fires. And poor Hansel was kept in a cage in the corner of the room. Each morning, the witch came to him and said, You must eat, little boy. I want you to get nice and plump. So all day long, Hansel had to eat licorice and sherbet and toffees and chocolate. And in the evening, the witch would say, Getting fatter, little boy? My eyes are bad, so put out your finger for me to feel. But clever Hansel poked a chicken bone through the bars instead of his finger. The witch felt the bone and said, ah, Too thin, too thin. You must eat more, little boy. Then one dreadful day, Hansel dropped the chicken bone as the witch was feeling it. Ha ha, a little cheat, she cried. Now give me your hand. Ah, yes, quite plump and ready for cooking. Gretel, light the stove. Gretel put more and more wood on the stove until it was burning hot. Oh, mistress, mistress, I've burned all the wood in the house and still the oven is cold as ice. Stupid girl, snapped the witch. She opened the door of the oven and, quick as a flash, Gretel pushed her inside it. Ah! There was a puff of smoke 
and the stove crumbled into ash. The wicked witch was gone forever. Gretel opened Hansel's cage and hugged him. Let's go home. They took the chocolate roof off the gingerbread house, turned it upside down and packed it with as many sweets as they could manage. A swan flew over as they worked. Oh, swan, called Gretel. Please, will you lead us home to the woodcutter's cottage? Hansel and Gretel followed the swan all the way to the edge of the forest, dragging the chocolate roof behind them like a sledge. The woodcutter was so glad to see them. He sent their stepmother away and said to Hansel and Gretel, How I've missed you. I'll never be so unkind and foolish again. Then they all took the witch's sweets to market and sold them. And after that, they were always very, very happy. Ooh, that story has made me feel all hungry again. Please, can I have a sweet, Doris? Oh, all right. How about one of my special marzipans? <gasps> yes, please. Oh, yum, yum. If you're a good boy, that is. I'll be as good as, as the good boys in the rhyme. Do and don't. There are many things, it's true, that good girls don't and bad boys do. On the other hand, girls shouldn't do the things that good boys wouldn't. When you go to cross the street, you shouldn't start to move your feet until the cars have gone, each one. Then good girls walk, but bad girls run. If you're playing with the cat, it's nice to stroke her, nice to pat, but pull her tail and she won't mew. So good boys don't, though bad boys do. Good girls, when they ask a favour, always use their best behaviour. Bad girls shout and stamp their feet and don't deserve the slightest treat. At the end of every day, you could put your clothes away or drop them like a worn-out shoe. Good boys don't, but bad boys do. In the bathroom, wash your face and leave your flannel in its place and never drink your mum shampoo. Good girls don't, but bad girls do. Doris? Yes, Morris? What's a wizard? Someone who makes magic spells. But we make magic spells. Yes, but wizards are older and wiser and make much more complicated spells. Like Grandpa? Yes, he's a good wizard. But not all wizards are good. Really? Nigel knows a story about one who was very, very naughty. The Wicked Wizard. <laughs> Mafuta, the hippopotamus, loved to go to the river and eat an enormous breakfast of leaves washed down with gallons of water. But one day, Mafuta found the river had all dried up and all the trees had disappeared. Oh, no, she cried. What am I to eat? Mafuta saw a rain cloud. Perhaps it'll rain, and then I can have a drink, she thought. The cloud was over a castle where Wizard and his friend Snake lived. <laughs> Cackled Wizard. With my magic wand, I stole the river and hid it in a cloud. And stole the trees, too, said Snake. They make such a nice roof garden on top of our castle. Mafuta bumped into the castle wall. Oh. Wizard yelled at her. Watch out! You've cracked my wall! Sorry, I was looking for some food. Mafuta looked up and saw the trees on top of the castle. May I have some of those leaves to eat? No! cried Wizard. He waved his wand at the cloud to cast a spell. Make it thunder! Make it snow! Make this silly hippo go! Thunder rumbled, lightning flashed, rain poured down, and Mafuta drank gallons of water. But I wanted snow! shouted Wizard. He waved his wand again. This fat hippo has spoiled my day! In an instant, fly her away! Mafuta's legs grew longer and longer. Soon, she could reach the trees on top of the castle. Happily, she munched the leaves. What's the matter with this wand? cried Wizard. 
The footer turned and, by mistake, knocked Wizard off the roof of his castle. Ah! Oh, so sorry, said Mafuta. Snake slithered down to the ground to help Wizard. <coughs> By mistake, Mafuta trod on Snake. Don't squash me, screamed Snake. It was naughty Wizard who stole the water and the trees. Wizard trembled. Well, said Mafuta. You'd better be a good wizard and return them at once, or I shall stand on you. Wizard waved his wand. Get this hippo out of my hair! Take trees and water over there! The footer blinked. She found herself under the trees on the banks of the river. Now, she said happily, I can have breakfast at last. Morris, come on, Doris, time for bed. Jump up on my engine and I'll run you round Magic Mountain and all the way home. Hooray! <laughs> Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye. 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 Goodbye.